well, good afternoon. I hope everybody's had a, a very good uh, festive season up to now, and uh, I hope they have a nice new year as well. But uh, we'll just have a look at the update on the end of December on a few plants that's showing signs of flowering. And uh, the plants you can see now are, uh, what are they? Telogenes, uh, Epidendrum, Maclellanara, and some more things we'll just show you. Uh, there's nothing in flower at all, I don't think. No, because I haven't, oh yeah, there is in flower, but these are just the small uh, dendrochylums. Well, I haven't made many uh, videos lately because I've been away for a few days and uh, also I had a bit of a, an accident with the car on uh, on Christmas Eve but uh, nobody's hurt apart from the car so uh, that's all right but I've got it all fixed now been did today get some tires changed and uh, I'm looking forward to next year when we, can, when we can get back to normal hopefully anyhow we'll just have a look at these plants and uh, we'll have a look at the spikes on them well these are selogenic glandulosa and they came from uh, the division divisions from a big plant I split a few months ago and uh, coming up beautiful leaves on them now all nice and clean and those are the old leaves all brown underneath another one here these are the new leaves absolutely beautiful right these uh, selogenes uh, they're found in the uh, southern parts of India and grows as an epiphyte or a lithophyte. Uh, in the winter time they need a nice cool rest with temperatures ranging from around 9 degrees to 15 degrees and don't give them any fertiliser in, uh, in the winter time. And these will flower in the spring from uh, shoots arising uh, from the new pseudobulbs. I'll show you that in a minute. They like a very good light with no sun for obvious reasons. Uh, the reasons are that the uh, leaves will become uh, badly marked and burnt. Compost must be open and the plant can be planted in pots or wooden trellis-like things. You know, always keep them open. Uh, it's very essential for these to have a very, very free draining compost. Uh, otherwise, if there's any water logging inside the pots, then uh, you'll be certain to get dying and rotted roots. So in the growing season, they require plenty of water, but if your media is, as I said before, is not very quick drying, the excess moisture will, also, will kill the roots. And also in the uh, growing season, uh, I fertilise just once a month and uh, that should be adequate. And the flowers of these are predominantly uh, white uh, with a yellow lip, but this can be uh, very variable. Right, we'll just show you the biggest plant here. And uh, this has got the least... Oh, that's it. No, I've just spotted two more. There's one spike coming up there. There's another two there. And I don't think there's any more anywhere, anywhere else. Nope. So that's three on that one. This is a much smaller plant in beautiful condition. And this has got two uh, two spikes on it. Mind you, I hope there's spikes because I've never uh, I've never flowered this one before, and this is just a single one with one uh, one flowering pseudobulb, and this has got a nice spike on it too. So there are the uh, silogenes, glandulosum, and the next plant, I'm just classing it as an odontoglossum, but I know it's an odontoglossum hybrid. And uh, what it's bred with, I've no idea. It could be Oncidium, could be Bialara, it could be virtually anything. But uh, I'll talk 
like this is a uh, species plant. Now these come from Peru in the mountain ranges and they don't, uh, I don't think they grow anywhere else other than that. They like uh, a medium light but uh, a light that you can give them for as long as possible. These again need a free draining uh, compost and they only need uh, repotting when the media shows the loss of the free draining. Uh, this is in uh, quite a nice medium bark with holes in the pots and uh, this drains very very quickly. It's another epiphyte and if you give them the same light and conditions of uh, Masdevallias or Oncidiums, anything that they've been interbred with, they'll be okay. Now as a species these are genuine cool growers and can stand temperatures down to oh, what, 5 degrees centigrade and probably a little lower and up to 25 degrees centigrade but if it gets any warmer than this then the heat will stop them growing as it will any other orchid really. If the leaves get too warm on your plants the plant will stop growing. Now these are fine rooted plants so uh, extra sh care should be taken, you know, in the media to make sure it is that free draining. I can't emphasise that enough because if there's anything saturated about this, uh, you know, it will kill the roots. And true on odontoglossums should never dry out, unlike many of the hybrids which you can let dry out for uh, a couple of days. Now during the growing season I've uh, fertilised this every couple of weeks and in winter I ease off a bit and probably do it every three to four weeks. Or sometimes in winter you can eliminate water completely. Right, I bought this plant about two years ago. In fact it could be three years ago. And uh, I bought it when the suitable bird was leaning over that way and it flowered from this little pseudobulb here that got rotted by a slug and beautiful flowers on it and then this is the new growth which is absolutely huge and I've just noticed this week well since I've come back off uh, a little rest I had this is coming up with two spikes one on each side you can see one there and one here so Better look after that because these flowers are absolutely beautiful. So that's the uh, Odontoglossum hybrid. It has just come on so I better leave it on because it's getting a bit cold in here. And this is a uh, Maxwellinara Pagan Love Song. And as you can see this one is coming in spike, absolutely beautiful. It's the first flowering for this one. but. Uh, this is growing very, very nicely. Probably won't stake it up, I think, but uh, I'll leave it, let it grow naturally, I think. We'll see how it goes, anyhow, that one. Now, this is a cross between, uh, or oh, what is it? Oncidium and Brassavola. And I don't think it's referred to anymore as McClellanara, because he was the instigator of this plant in. Uh, 1978 it was and uh, it's now referred to and I think it's been accepted by Q or the RHS as uh, Presidium but we'll see how that goes anyhow and as you can see I'll look it out it's a fine rooted plant so the let's have a look there we are it's a fine rooted plant so the same thing with the free free flowing compost is a must now this is a horrible plant I've had for years, and I mean years, and it's an Epidendron ciliare, and it used to flower absolutely beautiful, and it used to flower uh, with lots and lots of blooms, uh, absolutely gorgeous, sort of along the top of the compost, but the ones I've seen recently uh, grow like this, which this one's just put this one up. But I've never seen it uh, grow like that before. Uh, 
Well, these epidendrons, I don't know much about them. I know they're tough growing plants, and this has got to be a tough growing plant because it's been put, put aside as a, a dead for months at a time, but always manages to come back to life once you start watering it. So uh, we'll see how this one goes anyhow. And uh, I haven't much more to say than you, uh, the heat will be making too much noise anyhow. So thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, I'll see you all later. Bye.